Welcome back to Brutally Made. Happy Friday. Happy March. Oh my goodness. We are starting the third month of this first quarter already. And it is already feeling like spring around here. So it's um, very encouraging. I love the bright light. I love the heat. I love winter, but it's just kind of nice to have the doors open, the windows open, fresh air. It's it's pretty cool. We've had a lot of wind though. So let's dive into this uh, Friday's doodle from Elo Lovey. I wanted to uh, kind of use those again. Uh, March one here is Ladybug. Oh, Ladybug. I love that. So springy, so sweet. Reminds me of a nursery rhyme. Don't know. I always assumed everyone grew up with nursery rhymes. Um, My husband did not. So I don't know. My brothers did. So I don't want to say it was just a guy thing, but I will say a nursery rhyme. And he's like, what are you saying? (laughs) He never heard of it or something. But, you know, like ladybug, 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 fly away home. Your house is on fire and your children are alone. So... I just remember this illustration in the book that my mom would read. Uh, Ladybug's family was under a teapot and it was like propped up, but the smoke was coming out the spout and she was trying to get home to get her family. (laughs) Sometimes when I think about illustrations and stories and nursery rhymes, they're really kind of scary. (laughs) I'm just like, these are kids' stories. (laughs) Kids' rhymes. So funny. Um, doodle uh, ladybug or two or three and I love ladybugs they have that distinct scent too it's so strange and they're different colors I always you know default to red but there's greeny yellow and brown and dark dark you know red and and it's so odd to see them fly those wings are the little dotted wings are like layered it's very very interesting but it just definitely reminds me of spring so that's a good one. Well, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, having control of your audience and using newsletters to do that. Uh, today, my newsletter will be um, distributed to uh, people that have signed up. And it's just funny to see the evolution of newsletters and how it has changed the way that we communicate um, by email with people that are interested in stuff that we're doing and that you have that address and the way that you are required to have them opt in to, you know, receive that information. And you always have to have an opt out so people can take themselves off of a list. I mean, that's a requirement. Yeah. Kind of like the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, they, you know, it's, it's a, form of communication so you need to be able to control that and so it always like breaks my heart when someone comes off my newsletter list I'm like oh so sad because I try to make them very short I try to make them um just you know content that let you know what I'm doing for that month I always try to just send one a month I don't take advantage of the fact that I have your email um my shop and stuff you can opt in to have notifications for different things like um, sales and stuff. And I don't really, I just don't want to bug people with it. I want to use it just for that one newsletter a month. And so I really try not to to bother anyone other than that first email of the month has uh, my newsletter and updates and links and um, things that I feel are interesting or important, or I want people to know that maybe they can attend or sign up and take a class and I just think that it's a great form of communication. And if you're a small business to have a newsletter list, I think that's one of the best things that you can do. I personally use MailChimp um, and there's like thresholds that when you get to certain viewers and attend, you know, uh, not attendance, but lists of names, the larger the list, the more it's going to cost you. So I'm still able to use the free option and um i love being able to put my artwork in there and i can put links in there and announcements 
And so I manage, you know, quite a few newsletters for different organizations and for nonprofits and for small businesses. And um, it is very hard to come up with content if you're not really like actively doing something. So you have to be really creative and you want it to be worthwhile to the person receiving it. But I always try to make them very quick reads. I don't want to have a ton of text, I guess, more or less. I know when I receive newsletters, I really do skim through and uh, visuals help tremendously. And I do click links and I do like to, you know, oh, you have a class going on or this or that. But to read a lot of text, I mean, I personally don't do that. So I try to craft my newsletters or work on newsletters with the same thought because people are busy and you just want to get that highlight across and do it effectively. And I just wanted to, you know, see if everybody is thinking about different ways to kind of like maintain your audience and grab attention and communicate with people that are interested in learning about what you're doing and where you're going to be at and where your art is available. All of that is pretty important. And it's nice to be able to um, have an archive. I have all of my newsletters in an archive on my website. I try to wait uh, a little bit for that last month to go on the website um, just because I want people to subscribe to see it, but they're there. They're they're there definitely. And if somebody forgot something or wants to go back and read something, they're on my site under newsletters with the sign up form. What's really nice about MailChimp is that it makes um, a bunch of tools available to you at the different levels. And so I can have an integrated form for people to sign up to opt into receiving the newsletter. And then um, it goes right into my contact list and I don't have to do anything other than, you know, pull those names once a month to uh, do something special and a thank you for following me and receiving the newsletter. So I put everybody's name into a, a random name picker and let it pick a name and that person will win a prize. And to me, that's one of the best forms of advertising. So instead of spending that money towards like a digital ad, I will take that, those funds, and that's what pays for that gift. And I love collaborating with small businesses. This past month in February, I gave a $50 gift certificate to Blueberry Road Art and Gifts. My friend Brenda Olson is... um proprietor of that and it is a beautiful little website with great pieces of her artwork and then she's graciously put a bunch of us from our shared studio sessions from windowsill windowsill master class into um her i guess card shop and so we have some of our artwork on her cards and then she also sells on fair wholesale and they're available for all of the people that purchased her cards to stock in their stores and that's just wow I mean that just opened so many doors it's been so much fun to see that grow and see how she's evolved that and I wanted to celebrate her and share her work and so yeah so that gift card was something I purchased and then the name was drawn and that person received it and then they can go spend it at her store. So I love doing that. I always am open to collaborating with an artist or a small business that has something. I would even, you know, have you on uh, to talk about it on the podcast, interview you uh, video wise so I can show off your shops or your artwork. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see some of those in the past that have collaborated with me and um, talked to them by video. And we shared that video. And it's just another way, another layer to, you know, gain awareness of what you're doing and also kind of get I that networking, you know, aspect into it, too. So it's not just a piece of paper that you get mailed out. It can be a digital thing and you can embed those videos into the newsletter. And there's just a lot of things that you can do. And those 
addresses that you have, if as long as you, you know, honor them and, and keep them close and make sure that, you know, you don't sell those addresses, don't do things like that. I mean, people are trusting you as a way for them to communicate and you don't want to take advantage of it. So, you know, just use it for your newsletter and any other like really important communication. But, um, but yeah, I know we're all just bombarded with tons of messages and emails and things like that. But if it is a small business, an artist that you like, and they do have a newsletter, it does mean a whole, whole lot if for you to be part of that recipient list to get it to the artist and to the small business. And, you know, it doesn't take that long to to read through it and uh, keep that in mind when you're crafting it, making sure that it's something that you can, you know, skim through quickly and, you know, you honor that the recipient's time. And I always try to send myself a test, which is really nice with MailChimp. You can send yourself a test email to make sure your links work and, and make sure I'm not spelling things too crazy. I type fast and... <laughs> My husband, he helps me I'll check stuff. We still miss things. You know, I'm human. It's not AI generated. It's me <laughs> typing. But um, but yeah, it's a, a nice little way to to keep in touch. So that's one thing that I do to uh, kind of layer my messaging and awareness of what I'm doing, you know, on top of all the social media that I'm trying to, you know, share on as well. Um, going into a dozen days of the 100 day project. That's been a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun illustrating my lettering and drawing and doodling around the words. And um, I'm really excited. I ordered a, a wall mural of one of them to put in our basement. We've been working on the creative spaces down there for me and a nice little like movie um, nerd room for Brian, Star Wars room, movie room that we're putting together. And well, for me too. And uh, it's been a lot of fun watching that. I'll have to share some pictures because it's turning into a really cool spot. And um, I'm anxious to be able to relax down there and then also just work. So if I'm working on projects or sewing or painting or doing miniatures, I always felt very guilty about going downstairs and then he's up here watching TV and we're just like separated. I don't like that. You know, we we like to create together and um, he does a lot of 3D printing and modeling and uh, dioramas and they're very good. And um, he has a space there for for that. But now if he just wants to like veg out and watch a movie or watch TV, he can do that in this new space that we cleaned up and I'm anxious to to finish that. And I'm really excited about this little mural. I picked one of my my two word phrases and made that into a wall mural and it's going to be pretty cool. I hope, fingers crossed. It's a good test too because I've been um, doing a lot of uh, quoting for murals and I've uh, got a couple projects in the works uh, publicly I'm very, very excited about, super excited about. This uh, beginning of the year has been tremendous art-wise for a lot of projects. And if you got my newsletter um, or getting my newsletter today, you'll see quite a few of those. And um, paint by numbers have taken off and um, murals have taken off. Uh, just very excited. So very grateful very, very grateful for uh, the opportunities that are coming my way. I just love having the chance to be creative. And I just appreciate that tremendously. So I think communicating that in the newsletter is pretty important. And I know that helped raise awareness of what I was doing on top of sharing it on social media. So it's been a success for me. So I just wanted to you know talk about that today and share a little bit of thoughts around that and how I do it, um, how I create it, what tools I use. And maybe that's something you've been thinking about and you can just dive in on a free, you know, platform, signing up for one, sending it out, asking friends and stuff to sign up for, uh, to be recipients. If you uh, want to sign up for mine, go to tracydonbrewer.com and then just see the newsletter link click that all the archives are there but i would love to have you sign up for my newsletter and then you'd be part of the drawing to uh win a gift 
every month. So uh, this month for March, the gift is your choice of one of my two phrase illustrations that I'm doing um, made into a 60 by 80 minky blanket throw. So you will receive your choice of whichever one that you see out on uh, my list from the 100 day project. You get to pick that and then I will send you that as a throw that you can wrap up and watch TV. <laughs> So, all these little ladybugs. Oh, goodness. So, I hope that you have great plans for the weekend. I'm very excited. I have a flower arranging class that I'm taking at um, Lovely Ink Studios, downtown Canton, on Sunday. So, um, Jude's classes have been so much fun, and I'm looking forward to taking this and coming home with a beautiful arrangement and some knowledge on how to do it properly. So that's going to be a class I'm taking Sunday. So I'm very excited about that. And um, got a lot of art to do. I have a lot of drawing to do and painting. And very excited about that too. So have a wonderful March 1. We made it through our leap day and we are going into spring. And I am anxious for next week. I have my second guest on and you are going to love her and you're going to love what she does because it's fantastic. So stay tuned. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you later. Brutally made people. Take care. Bye. Bye.